What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the all new 2022 Chevy Bolt EUV. So I've got an entire lineup of videos out uh, either by the time you're watching this or shortly after if you're seeing this right when it goes live. I will have a review of the 2022 Bolt EV, the smaller kind of younger brother of the EUV here, but I'll have that out probably before you're watching this video. I'm also going to be doing a comparison between the 2021 Chevy Bolt and the 2022 Chevy Bolt. Just talking about the visual redesign going on and, and kind of the differences between the two. So that'll be out. So definitely hit subscribe so you don't miss that. And I'll also be doing a comparison between the 2022 Bolt EV and the 2022 Bolt EUV that we've got right next to me here. So a whole lineup of Bolt comparison videos and first look videos, so definitely hit subscribe so you don't miss any of those. But in this video, we're talking about the EUV. Now this is the larger version that has just been released this summer of the kind of well-known Bolt lineup. So these things literally just got off the truck. I ran back, grabbed one out of our service department, said, I'm gonna shoot this, ripped the plastic off myself, had to put it out of transport mode, the whole nine. So I'm super excited about these EUVs. I'm actually considering upgrading to one of these when my lease is up on my 2019 Crosstrek, which is in September. And fast forward to literally 24 hours after shooting this video, and I have it right here, my 2022 Chevy Bolt EUV. I couldn't help myself, guys. Inventory is so limited, you've got to jump on it when you have the chance. I traded in my Crosstrek lease early, and now I'm proud to have in my possession a 2022 Chevy Bolt EUV. So I made a video over on my tech channel about my kind of first impressions and what it was like to go through the process of getting it and I touch on a couple things over there, so definitely check the link in the description or the card above if you wanna see my first impressions or if you wanna follow my journey of owning an EV for the first time. I'm super excited, I'm looking forward to the process, so definitely head on over to my channel, Mets Tech, so you can check out my first impressions there. I'm also going to sprinkle in a couple notes about this video that you're watching right now. Now, admittedly, I didn't know as much about the EUV as I knew about the EV, so a couple things that I've learned. First and foremost, Super Cruise. That is specific to the EUV. You can't get it on any level of the Bolt EV. So only on the EUV, and it only comes standard on the launch edition. It is an option to add even on the higher trim Premier. So if you want Super Cruise, the only way you're getting that is the launch edition and all that inventory is already sold. So you're gonna have to you know, wait or just add it as an option on a Premier. Another super important distinction that I completely failed to mention originally when recording this video is that the EUV comes with a dual level charger. Now I show it in the video, you can see it's like this block. I've got it on screen right now and it has little adapters on the end that can work on your standard three prong 120 volt outlet, as well as your more powerful 240 volt outlets like you'd plug your dryer or your washer into. These can be easily user swapped to fit whatever you have. So there's really no need to buy an additional level two wall charger that uses that 240 volt plug. You can just use the one that Chevy gives you by default. Now, like I said, it's standard on the EUV. It is not standard on the EV. You have to add it on as an option. So that's a huge benefit of getting an EUV over the regular EV. Additionally, super important. You guys let me know in the comments over on my tech channel when I posted my first impressions video of the Bolt EUV that Chevy actually pays for a 240 volt outlet to be installed where accessible for your vehicle. They cover it for free. So I was about to pay an electrician to put in an outlet and install my charger and pay 500, 600 bucks for a level two wall charger. I don't have to do either of those things. I can just have the electrician come out for free via Chevy, have them put in a 240 volt outlet and then use the dual level charger that you get from Chevy by default in the EUV, plug that in, charge it right up, no problem, and have significantly faster charge times than just using your standard level one charger. It's great. Now, the only downside is you do have to work with the dealership that you lease or purchase from, and they have to set up the appointment for that electrician to kind of come out and install. They have to fill out a form on their end and things like that. That's no problem here. I work at a Chevy dealership and we can definitely get you taken care of if you purchase or lease from us. And my buddy, Mike, uh, Chevy dude, helped me out with that whole process. So I'm definitely gonna get my appointment set up very soon to have that put in. Again, if you guys are interested in that journey, head on over, check out my tech channel, but let's get back to the video. So as of the time of making this video, the Bolt EV comes in two trim levels, the 1LT and the 2LT, that's it. 
The EUV has two trim levels as well as we speak. There's kind of a launch edition version that's out right now. And then there is the LT. So basically the, the LT and the Premier. So this is the LT model. So this is kind of like the base model basically. But we'll be covering everything, the look of it, what you get on the LT versus the Premier and the dimensions compared to its smaller brother, the EV. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. So both models are powered by the same motor and that is a 200 horsepower, 266 pound feet of torque motor up underneath powered by a 65 kilowatt hour battery. Now we touched on this in my EV review, but you have this updated headlight cluster. So a ton of brands are doing this. Chevy is right there among them. And that is the split headlight design. Now on the EV, since it's a little bit of a smaller front end, this is all kind of connected as one piece, even though there's a couple distinct elements with your headlights and your brights and then your DRLs and your turn signals. This actually has a distinct split with a body colored piece differentiating the two parts. So you have your DRLs up here that have a sequential turn signal built into them as well. These are LED and then you have your uh, headlight and brights cluster right here, which are as well LED. You have a little Chevy bow tie there on your side reflector right there. Now, as far as the front fascia goes, it is a decent bit more extensive looking than the normal bolt. The normal bolt is very, very compact and small, whereas this has more of a standard looking front end. Now your motor is up underneath, like I mentioned, sloping on down, you've got kind of a little bit of a split lip here with your blacked out Chevy bow tie. Now we're starting to see that on all these bolts is this black bow tie versus is your standard kind of gold bow tie. Then you have the next part of the fascia and that is this like textured plastic bit that's up underneath. It's kind of like the pseudo grill that a lot of these electric vehicle manufacturers are doing. I don't mind the look of it, but some people might be a little put off by it. If they got rid of this, you probably have no idea that this wasn't like a Trax or something like that. So I think it's interesting that they threw that in there to differentiate it. Now, if you go up to the Premier, you will have a front facing camera and that'll give you your HD surround vision system. This LT does not have that, so you won't see it. But if you're interested in what that surround vision system looks like, I talk about it in my 2022 Bolt EV video, so I'll have that linked above. Now moving on back, the LT sits on these 17 inch uh, painted aluminum wheels. I talked about this in the EV video. I'm not a huge fan of these plain silver wheels, but that's just kind of what you get on the base model. If you go up to the Premier, you're going to get some, you know, two-tone carbon flash accented wheels that I think look a lot better, but you know, you have those on here. Moving on back, you don't really have any like extensively interesting body panels or anything like that. You have a little bit of a line across the uh, edge of the windows here and a little bit of this kind of lip that goes around the wheel wells, but that's about it. You've got these cool two-tone mirrors here. So part body colored, part black. Integrated turn signal right here. They're also heated. They're manual folding though. And you can also have blind spot monitoring on them on the higher trim. And if you go up to the Premier, you'll have that camera up underneath that works with that surround vision camera system. Keyless access on the door panels. That is standard across the board. Nice and simple, just with this little silver button kind of like pseudo roof rails up top with a satin and gloss black look to them. You could definitely mount something, maybe like a crossbar or something on here, but they're not that substantial. If you go up to the Premier, you can also get a panoramic sunroof, but you don't have it here on the LT. Now, as far as dimensions go, the EV and the EUV are about the same as far as width and height goes. Where you're really gonna notice the difference is the length and the wheelbase. So the length, it's about six inches longer. So the EV is about 163 inches long, whereas here on the EUV, you get about 169 inches. And as far as the wheelbase, you go from about 102 inches to about 105 inches. That's where you're really gonna notice it if you put them next to each other. The front end is a little bit more bulky and substantial and it's just longer in general. So moving to the back of the Bolt EUV here, you'll see this awesome back end. Kind of got a little bit of a spoiler here, rear glass with this wiper. Kind of have this lip that runs across here with these kind of re-sculpted headlights. Now I'm not gonna call this a redesign obviously because this is an entirely new unit. There has never been a Bolt EUV before, but as far as EV stylings, these headlights that we have on the EUV and the EV have been kind of redone to be more in line with other Chevy models. Black piece that runs across, black Chevy bow tie, standard HD rear camera, like I mentioned, you will have surround vision if you have the Premier. And then you've got reflectors here up underneath, kind of this big plastic cladding piece, then a satin accent at the bottom with another light. Your Bolt EUV badging, super cool. You're not gonna see very many of these out there right now uh, if you do happen to have one. Again, this little lip will keep stuff off of your rear glass. If you go ahead and open up the lift gate, you've got a cargo cover back here, 
This is your charger and your mats. Up under here, you've got some extra storage space and you can actually remove this if you need a little bit more storage space, but this is kind of like a flat cargo cover in case you want to use it as a flat cargo area. You can do that now. As far as dimensions go, you actually have a little bit less cargo space in the EUV than you do on the standard EV hatch. It's not a lot. If you look at Chevy's official specs, it's about like 0.3 cubic feet. So you go from having about 16.6 cubic feet with the rear seats up to about 16.3 cubic feet. So it's a tiny bit. And if you fold the rear seats down, you're gonna go from, I think, 57 cubic feet of storage space on the EV to like 56.9. It is very, very minimal as far as what you end up losing, but you do lose a tiny bit of cargo capacity. But that is about it here on the back end, but that's all right. Let's go hop in the cabin and take a look at what we've got going on. All right, so hopping inside the 2022 EUV cabin, there's a couple things you'll notice. If you've seen my EV video, you'll know that Chevy has kind of taken this new approach to their electric vehicles, and that is to like kind of de-electrify them. And what I mean by that is making this cabin look as normal and familiar as possible to help get rid of the stigma that like electric vehicles have to be all these like weird concepty looking, uh, futuristic looking cabins, interiors, and exteriors. So they kind of got rid of all the stuff that kind of made the Bolt look weird in the Chevy lineup. Mainly being like that um, textured stuff that was on the dash back in the day, as well as the different user interface here. We'll take a look at that in just a second. So across the board, they just wanted to make these Bolts, this new lineup of Bolts, not stand out as some weird futuristic concept electric car, but just a normal car that has a battery. Now this is kind of a new thing. This EUV is different, but really it's just a little bit bigger bolt. That's really the main difference. Plus you, there's a couple other features you can't get on the normal bolt, but mainly it's a little bit extra space in that same kind of bolt form factor. But let's talk about what we've got going on in here. Now, like I mentioned outside, this is the LT. So you're gonna be missing some specific features and I'll point those out as we go. Starting up front, you have this Chevy steering wheel. This is kind of their more recent updated steering wheel. Now this one is just kind of like a rubber steering wheel. It doesn't have the leather wrapped with the accent stitching that you'll get up on the Premier model. It doesn't have adaptive cruise control like you'll have on the higher trim model and it's not heated like you'll have on the higher trim model, but you still get your regular cruise control options on the side you can turn off the forward collision warnings and then you also have your media controls on the right side of the steering wheel i also mentioned this in my ev video but they uh, repositioned the regen braking button it used to be kind of down here where these media controls are now now it's kind of up on the steering wheel where a paddle shifter would normally be so i think it's a little bit easier to access but i know some people that have bolts that preferred the old way it was positioned, but you can be the judge of that. Now, right past the steering wheel, you're gonna have your eight inch digital gauge cluster. Now, this has been a updated kind of from the older Bolt models. It's got a, you know all the same things you're used to seeing. So you've got your compass, you've got your time, you have how many miles on your uh, vehicle, you've got what gear you're in, you've got your safety systems, you've got your regen braking, you've got your trip calculators, I mean, tire pressure, everything, battery life remaining, it's all there. If you have adaptive cruise control as well, you can change you know, your, your distance between vehicles and all that kind of stuff on that screen. Let's move on over to this infotainment display over here. Now, this is one of those things, like I said, they're kind of destigmatizing the EV market by just slapping a normal Chevy infotainment center in the middle of this bolt, but just giving it some additional features like the energy menu. We'll take a look at it in just a second, but it's a clean, flat design language. It's a 10.2 inch display. So a really, really big display that you get just standard across the board, which is awesome. If you go up to the Premier, you'll get built in navigation, but don't pay extra for that. So this system has all your standard features you're used to seeing. AM, FM, Sirius, XM radio, Bluetooth, your energy menu, like I mentioned, you have built-in profiles that you can have assigned to different key fobs, wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto standard. You've got different apps you can use. 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot. You have your climate control controllable on this system, and then you have your rear vision camera as well. So all that stuff built into this beautiful, easy to use, and very responsive display. I give this an A+. But let's take a look at that energy menu that is specific to the Bolt lineup. So in here, you can see how much battery power you have left. I think we're at about like 20% or so. Now this details menu is super cool. It will break down and show you 
which things are using the most battery. So as we can see right now in this example, our driving and accessories is using 61% of our battery life. Our climate settings has used 39% so far. And then there's an option for battery conditioning, which we don't have, uh, we have 0% used right now. Now this vehicle only has three miles on it, so it's not a great sample size, but it's cool that over time you can kind of track which things are using the most and adjust that accordingly so that you get the most out of your battery life. You can also go to impacts and this will break it down even more showing you what is having either a positive or a negative impact on your battery life. So you've got technique, terrain, climate, and then outside temperature. So let's take a quick look at the rear camera system. Now this is just your standard HD rear camera, which is great. It's great to have an HD rear camera, no doubt about that. You do get your leading lines as well, kind of telling you which way you're turning. Again, if you go up to the premiere, you're gonna get that HD surround vision camera system, which I've got a clip here on screen so you can see what that looks like. Moving on down, you have your climate control system. Now you can control that inside of the screen here just by hitting these buttons and adjusting everything you want, but you do have physical buttons as well up underneath. Now, this is gonna be missing your heated seat button and your heated steering wheel button that you'll get up on the Premier. Moving down from that, you've got your IO area. So you've got a single USB-C port, a USB-A port, a 12 volt outlet, and your Qi enabled wireless charging pad, which is standard. That's awesome. Back from that, you have a couple buttons. You have your sport mode button, which is standard. You have your traction control button, and then you have your lane departure warning button right there. Moving on back, you'll see that you actually have a shift by wire pad as opposed to a standard shift knob. And this is pulling from other Chevy models. We've seen something similar to this on the Corvette and the Tahoe has a similar thing, but it's up here and a little bit different of a function. But you have a push button park, toggle for reverse, push for neutral, toggle for drive, and then you have your one pedal driving button which is specific now, whereas an older Bolt model would just have had the L setting, which would have then been your one pedal driving. So two cup holders, a center console, pretty nice deep pocket with a little key register pad down there so you can do your uh, profiles or your teen driver mode and set all that up easily. Now here on the LT, you just have a standard rear view mirror, not even auto dimming or anything like that. But if you go up to the Premiere, you will get the rear view mirror camera. Up from that, you have your dome lights and you have your OnStar controls. And then if you do have the Premiere and you have that panoramic sunroof, you'll have your sunroof controls right there. You actually have automatic windows for driver and passenger, which is an upgrade from the regular Bolt where that even on the highest trim just had an automatic driver side window. You have your mirror controls right here. And then as far as your speaker system, it is just a six speaker audio system where if you go up, you'll get a Bose premium audio system up on the Premiere. Now, as far as seating surfaces go, this LT has these cloth seats with accent stitching and kind of this cool triangular texture design to them. If you go up to the Premiere, you will get some leather appointed seats like we looked at in the 2LT Bolt EV. Uh, and you'll also get heated seats, whereas these cloth ones are not heated. A couple other features you'll get if you go up to the Premiere version of the EUV, you'll get that advanced adaptive cruise control, a couple other safety features as well. And you'll get what Chevy is calling their Super Cruise package. Now the Super Cruise package is an option up on the Premiere, you don't get it standard, but it is hands-free driver assistance systems for use on compatible roads, which requires a subscription, and you get enhanced automatic emergency braking. So that's cool. That kind is like their semi-autonomous driving features. And you, again, you have to add that option onto the Premiere, it doesn't come standard. Additionally, up on the Premiere, you'll get an eight-way power adjustable driver's seat, whereas this driver's seat is a manually adjustable seat as well as the passenger seat is manually adjustable. You can also get heated rear seats up on the Premiere, but you do get two USB ports, one USB-C port, and one USB-A port in the back. Sorry, I'm back again one more time. I didn't actually drive the EUV in this video. And the reason I did that is because I already drove drove the EV and talked about the experience of driving it over in that video. So if you're interested, definitely check the card above or the link in the description for that video. It's nearly the exact same driving experience. The EUV is about 150 pounds heavier than the regular Bolt. The acceleration is the same. It's just it's the exact same driving experience. So if you're interested in my thoughts on the driving experience, definitely check out the EV video. Well, thanks so much for watching, guys. Drop a like on the video if you loved it. Tell me in the comments down below what do you think about the new 2022 Bolt EUV. Do you like it? you like the EV better? Let's have a conversation down in the comments. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be one of the first to see every single new video the second I hit publish. We'll see you in the next one.